part two of the Mary Ann Taylor puppet interview. Sit down and grab a drink and watch what happens. Carol, how long have you been helping Mrs. Taylor? About six years. About six years. Yeah, she called me one day and needed some help for a couple of weeks, and I've been here for six years. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah. couldn't get rid of Just it. Couldn't get rid of it. Kind of like the stray cat that's right. now over here right. eating. It's, it's, I've enjoyed it very much. It's very a lot of fun. Really, she can't get rid of me. <laughs> I keep calling her. Uh, and this would be a little child. If you notice, I took a little wedge out here, and that gives it more of a childlike look. Then I, I just glue uh, foam on the cheeks and chin or whatever uh, facial features I want. This one, if you'll notice, he has his features go all the way to the, to the back behind the mouth. You have to leave the mouth open uh, so you can, it doesn't hurt the people's hands. You have to make it very, very easy for them to open and close. And then most all of this is, is put together with a contact cement. Contact cement. And then all the, the rest is hand stitch. You can see the seams here. Yeah. Most of them I try to pull them back so that uh, the hair covers them, but I do cover the entire head. And of course the neck is separate also. Yeah. And I attach the neck down uh, to the bottom of the body so that when you turn the head, uh, the shoulders don't move. Right. And then you also make a real smooth, almost like a silk or smooth polyester liner mm -hmm. so that your arm slides up in there good. And then there's a strap up inside these guys' yeah. heads that uh, they're very, very detailed and a lot of time. I think the most time-consuming thing, I thought, is the hand stitching. Most all of it's yeah. hand, hand sewn. And, uh, and then the glue is the hardest thing. I think a lot of people think most of my brain damage is from the cheap <laughs> beer, but I think it's from the glue over here at it's your from place. from the contact from this, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's, let's move over to the sewing area, and we'll, uh, we'll take... Now, what is this guy? What kind of character this is... This guy, I think he, he's just kind of a professor or a uh, British... I, uh, I had one call that said, I told him about it, and he said that he may buy it at the convention. This... These go to my convention, that's what I'm getting ready for. Usually I have very few puppets here because I ship them as soon as I finish them up. Right. And, but, and, um, and then a lot of your puppets that you've made over the years, you'll see them come back to you for repairs and stuff mm -hmm. years later. I think that's neat that, that there's that many uh, uh, puppet people out there and, and puppet builders. And, but you say now, puppets are not an extremely popular thing. I know one time you told me that, that I probably own more of your puppets uh, here in Roanoke than anybody else. I have very few puppets even in the state of Virginia. Most of them, my biggest states, I don't know why Ohio is large, but I do have a lot of customers in Ohio, New York, California, and Florida, I think, are probably my biggest. Now, people are probably wondering, a, a puppet like that, a complete finished dress puppet, about what does he sell for? Four seventy-five. Four seventy-five, mm -hmm. and I know uh, when, when I first met you, and I and and you'd tell me, you know, about what a puppet ran. I was like, wow, you know, you you think that's high, and then once you've built one, I told you they should be about double that <laughs> price. They take it. They're very labor intensive. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, good. And where do you find like most of your customers? Uh, most of them uh, find me on the net, on, and on the then internet. I go to the International Ventriloquist Convention. And that's in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, and I have a dealer's table there. And usually there are about three to four hundred ventriloquists, and that's probably the largest group of ventriloquists, you know, that come together is at the convention. And then just over the years, people over people years. keep learning about you. All right, well, we'll move over to the sewing table now and see what's going on over there. Okay. All right, now now this is the uh, the sewing area. So once once the foam is all dried up and, and carved out and then you uh, it's time to start stretching the fabric over and sewing. So what, what all, tell us a little bit about what goes on over here. Over here this is where I, I use the contact cement. This is where just about everything happens. Uh, I do the carving here. I've got linoleum instead of the carpet so the foam really makes a mess. I, it just clings to you. It doesn't fall into the trash can nice and, and neatly. So. Okay, that was part two. Um, let's uh, see you next time on part three. Bye!